what I'd like to start out showing you here is what's called a compound path. A compound path essentially is when you have a shape and you want a hole in it, um, similar to uh, having a picture frame and um, or having a window frame and you want to see through the object to something that's behind it. <clears throat> and let's say that um, here, this yellow area is what we would like to have as a hole so that we could see these objects behind it. And um, you can't really create that without a special command. If we were to um, take the fill out of the yellow, then we'll just uh, simply see the solid blue. So that's certainly not going to give us this hole um, or window frame look. So what you do, it's pretty, pretty simple. Um, you create two shapes. It can be any two shapes. Um, this inner shape could have been a circle or an oval. <clears throat> but the point is, is we have one, uh, we have these two shapes and we select both of them. So uh, this one is selected. I'll shift click the second, the blue rectangle. And then you simply, uh, with both of them selected, go up under object, object in the main menu, slide down to compound path, and make the compound path. And there you see the hole that's now been created inside this object. And what's funny about it is it's not really a hole, it's defined electronically. And I'm going to go and um, get this white arrow with the plus sign that we really haven't talked much about and um, I'm going to select it and then deselect and go back and select just the inner square and watch what happens when I move this around in fact <clears throat> the hole moves with it so it creates kind of a funny thing that doesn't make a lot of logical sense but it nonetheless works. And that is a compound path. Select the two objects, object, make a compound path. And we could also undo it or release it if need be. Okay. The, um, the next thing I want to talk about is uh, the, the many borders and styles of shapes that we can um, create and a modify. Um, here um, I have uh, just a simple shape and um, we can go up under window window and drop down to um, brush libraries and the brush libraries have a great many different kinds of borders and decorative elements that can be used around the edge of our images. <clears throat> For instance, we have the, um, the, the border frames, the geometric frames, and um, here they are, and um, there's a bunch of them, and uh, you can pick these and put these on as strokes, and you can change how they're going to look by making the thick the stroke thicker as you can see here and there are a great many of these as you can see and uh, one of the newer features that is pretty cool even I'm impressed uh, by it is that we can take these borders and we can customize them what I mean by that is we can uh, select them of course we'll select them and um, then we're able to go up under object <clears throat> and expand appearance object expand appearance when we do that it breaks this shape now or this border into all of its original vector elements and it's just amazing because now I can go in and selectively um, activate these different pieces and um, uh, simply uh, simply change them 
Um, it's uh, really quite quite uh, amazing to me. Uh, it's all now completely uh, customizable um, and uh, can be changed and eliminated or whatever it is that you want to do. So um, there are some pretty neat things that are available um, with uh, these different kinds of borders. And there are also um, some uh, artistic ones and like the paintbrush and the calligraphy brush that we can apply um, to these shapes <coughs> like this. Yep. Yep. Now that this has, has become, um, let me just create a new shape here. I think um, making those borders had, um, and uh, again, look at this. And we can color them differently, but you've got all of these different creative uh, borders, and um, you can uh, do whatever your heart's content is uh, with these. And by changing uh, the size and the thickness of the stroke, we can, of course, change the overall appearance of these things. Okay, and um, uh, as well, um, and I may have already mentioned it, the very many, many, many different kinds of um, gradients that are available. We can go window, drop down to our swatch libraries, and there are all of these different groups of colors um, that they have set out um, and put together for us. Uh, here's nature. Uh, with beach and flowers and landscape and a whole host of related colors that already are complementary and go together. And so this can be great with the gradient mesh or uh, for doing really anything um, that we're working on. <clears throat> you don't have to reinvent the wheel, more or less, because they've more or less done a great deal of that for us. And so we have a lot of different colors and in the way of um, gradients, we have, look at all these different groups of gradients, just gradients. So you don't have to uh, start from scratch. You can, of course, um, alter them and edit them, but they've done a good bit of the work for us. And here they are. And look at how beautiful some of these are and uh, they're just ready to go. So you can save yourself a lot of time and effort and um, have some beautiful things at your disposal that you don't have to create from scratch. And that's really the point of all of this, is to give you more tools to work much more quickly and efficiently um, and make it easier all the way around.